Who's excited? Yeah. yeah. Hey, all right. Got my energy in the back row. So there's a whole track for GraphQL, which is not in here. But there are several other tracks. And do you know what we call the ones that aren't GraphQL, maybe? Sorry? Do you know what we call the, these tracks that aren't GraphQL, the GraphQL track? The, the non-GraphQL track. No, we call them the rest. <laughs> the rest. Oh, rest. nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this track <laughs> is is about the Programmable Society, and there's no one better to kick us off than Mehdi to tell us what that is and to set the stage for the, the rest of the talks this morning. For the rest, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, really glad to be here, um, you know, presenting. I, I present quite rarely at API Days because I prefer others. Uh, you know, as, uh, as someone used to say, when you love music, uh, you, you, you love hearing others play violin, right, and, and play music. Uh, and so you play less than others, but it's uh, it's um, something today. I'll try to share you a glimpse of what I share with, uh, like, say, top CIOs or CTOs or top executive companies, what I bring to them, right? So it's, it will be a condensed uh, sum up. Uh, and, and yeah, so funny enough, some people were texting me, say, we are in the subway, wait, <laughs> but we cannot wait more uh, uh, than that. And yes, not to, uh, but there will be, it will be video recorded, right? So I'll just make a small glimpse about the, what I call the programmable society and how, why, how APIs are actually enabling it, right? And how you, sh you, sh you need to think your APIs and your API strategy uh, for, to be prepared for the future uh, uh, of the business, right? So uh, fun, uh, yeah, a few things, I'm the founder of the, uh, the API conferences. I'm a, a co-founder of uh, an API startup that has been acquired uh, two years ago. Uh, and uh, for the last two years, I've been a European Commission expert on APIs and open data, and so how you can monetize open data with APIs, because with APIs, actually, you have metrics. You know who is consuming where, for what kind of application, where with open data, you just give a file and you know, don't know where it goes, right? Uh, I'm a professional lecturer at the HEC MBA, uh, right, uh, like a French business school. Uh, there, and I'm author of a book called Continuous API Management. We had a book signature yesterday. Uh, if you uh, want a copy, or at least a PDF copy, you can come, uh, come reach me, right? I also design API landscape. You know, we have a big landscape outside in the, in the main auditorium, in the main, uh, the partner village, right? So you can also check if your company is not there. I didn't do my job, uh, so please tell me, right? And I, I write every year a report called the, design, the Banking API State of the Market, right? So uh, the next one is coming. But again, uh, I've specialized especially in this, in this banking and insurance space. Uh, so if you are in this industry, uh, uh, we can help you to understand what's going on uh, out there. So let's start. You know all this quote right, right from Mark Andreessen, you know, software is eating the world, right? He said that in 2011, right? He said that in 2011, but the most important here, when he claimed that software is eating the world, is that at some point, every company will be a software company, right? Why? Because now software is disrupting so much the industries that it's not the, for example, the example he takes, it's, it's not the, the best people who do banking, like for example, banks. He said it's not the people who, do, who are the best to do banking, who will produce average software who will win, but now software is so much important in the experience, right, that at some point it's the best company who do the best software that will learn banking that will be the best, right? You know, so now software is uh, the decision, right, where you uh, buy, uh, so when you, let's say, you consume a specific mobile application on others, right? You know, so, and this design, so simplicity sells, you know, all this kind of stuff, like, uh, are really making it, uh, the, the new giants are completely software driven, right? And so my claim here is that if software is eating the world, right, if you understand software better than others, you will win. It, uh, it also came from a, an article from Chris Anderson in 2008, it's the end of theory. I don't know if you read it, it's the end of theory. He claims that all the best experts, scientists, right, uh, sometimes make less, uh, uh, have less results than people who have a lot of data and don't understand exactly what's going on, right? You know? So now the fact you have more data 
You know, you are able to understand more what's happening than people who understand what's happening but don't have the data to confirm it, right? And so it's the same with software. If you are the best on software, you can actually deliver a better experience and win over people who know better the job, right? So if in the future every company will be a software company, my claim, and this is what I'll try to share with you today, is that in the future every company will be an API company, right? Will be an API company inside and outside, right? And we will see, we will see why in the next uh, 15 minutes. So two examples that a lot of people know in this industry, uh, Twilio and SMS and voice call API, right? That is valued at like $14 billion today, a oh, little bit uh, over 10 years. Fairly enough, it has been produced by a product manager at Amazon, right? So that's something we need to think about. And Stripe, another company who just raised $250 million in September at $32.5 billion valuation, right? So that, that's huge. That, that's 50% uh, more than a group like Société Générale, right, in France, you know, the bank. So that's, that's impressive in just 10 years, right? And, and funny enough, these companies are just building and producing APIs, right? Just selling APIs uh, directly, right? They don't have any specific infrastructure in place, but they have the interface to access to infrastructure. But their promise, their promise is to deliver, if you integrate with them, you can deliver on any carrier for Twilio or on any payment system with Stripe, and so you can be a worldwide a global company. Also one important thing, uh, Stripe is only 2,000 employees, so 32 billion for 2,000 employees, that's $16 million per employee, right? So this is how you accumulate value so much with programmable business models. We will see what does that mean. Another thing, another study, so the impact of, of an API on performance, the impact of APIs on company performance. So Marshan Van Aslin, he's a researcher at Boston University, and he made a study of two years comparing companies over $2 billion of value, right? So it's not startups. Companies over $2 billion of value, who, the ones who ha highly consume APIs internally, and the ones who, who don't actually consume APIs internally for uh, managing information. And what he found, he found in that in average, companies who have high consumption of APIs internally have an average 10% extra valuation. So two, $2 billion value, right, 10% market cap, right, it's that $200 million average value, right? And why? So they don't make more, they don't make more money, they have, don't have more revenues than the other, but what he found, he found that actually the market understand these companies are, begin, are becoming more agile. They are becoming the platform of tomorrow, they integrate more partners. So they actualize the valuation, based on that feeling, right? So the market, and you know, we say often investors anticipate what, what's next, right? This is our job, right? So companies who heavily consume APIs, right, give a good signal uh, to the market. So uh, I also claim that in the network software economy, APIs are studying the end of producers. So it's really the end of producers. It, producers will be more rare, and, and they will have less, they will be able to accumulate less and less value, right? So you know the, the distribution, right? The supermarket distribution, they actually like kill the, the farmers, right? On the value accumulation. I don't, know if, I don't know for other countries in Europe or in the US, but in France, just to say a farmer suicides himself or herself like every day. Right? This is for, for financial condition most of the time, right? So farmers are really squeezed economically because of the distribution, they have been completely disrupted, right? And so this is actually what's going on on the software industry, right? The first one who has been disrupted by APIs is IBM, right? You know the story, like Microsoft had the software, the DOS operating system, right? Because it was a QDOS at the, at the start. And IBM was, bu was building the hardware, the computers, right? And so Microsoft said, okay, okay, I will own the software, I will own the API, I will define the APIs for all hardwares. And you, IBM, you will be able to deliver my software. And IBM at the time was the producer of computers, and, it was, and IBM was believing that the, produce, the, the production would be the key. You own the hardware, you have the power. But actually what Microsoft found is that, yeah, if I own the API, I can deliver it on any hardware. So now every hardware company is a producer, but I'm the distributor of applications, right? And I will have on the developers and stuff, right? And so since then, so Microsoft really won it. IBM has a really strong IP policy now. They don't want this to happen again. And so this is a classic value chain, right? This is the value chain. You have the infrastructure, 
right? The deep, deep assets of every company, right? You have the assets, like the, the tools, the data, whatever, uh, the, the goods, the industry, the manufacturing, right? You have the distribution channels, and on top you have the customer, the customer experience, right? So what does that happen in a software economy? So some companies, some developers, right, try to make application all over the value chain, right? It's really close to the customer, sometimes deep in the infrastructure, but the higher you go, the less capital intensive it is. It's easy to make an application to disrupt a big company who make two to five years to make an app, right? So what happens? They raise money, they, they become startups, but the, the one who succeed the most in average because they are less capital intensive and they have a scale uh, ability is on the customer experience. So they grow and scale, right? And they, take the, they own the customer experience. And what happens when you own the customer experience? Everybody becomes a producer. You own the interface with the customer, right? You are closer to the value, so everybody wants to be there. And when you do that, you own the customer, you accumulate data, so you become a platform. You, know, you become a platform and then you add other people to your platform to reach the customers, right? You own, at least you own their attention. And then uh, fine, you distribute your product and so now you become like a, a deeper infrastructure because now you are able to deliver platform directly to others, right? You are a full ecosystem, right? Not only you own product, but you onboard the product of others, you build other assets, and then what you are, what I call a full stack company, right? And if we go back, right, if we go back here, so all the company you know, right, the big companies you know, the big techs are all, most of the time gone there, right? So just an example, Google was just a search engine for research papers in Stanford, right? But, you know, but after they made a search engine for all things you can find, and now they make their own uh, uh, a distribution agency, you know, advertisement agency, because they own the customer, right? When you go on Google, you give your time to Google, right? You give your data, so now they can sell ads, their own uh, advertisement, and you can become a platform, and so on and so on, right? Amazon, the same. They were just selling books on the, in the US on e-commerce. Then they were selling everything, right? They own the customer experience. Then they make their own logistics networks, their own tools, their own devices. Uh, and then they just even acquired Whole Foods in the US, right? So now they are a completely full stack company. And you can see like Netflix, again, just distributing, right? Just di distributing content. But now they even produce their own content. So yeah, uh, and, uh, and people think that at some point they will be an internet provider at some point, right? You know, so they really go down in the value chain. So Netflix does just not distribute, but now it's produce, produce content and go down. Airbnb, the same, Facebook, the same, you know, all these kind of companies, they all follow the thing. And these companies produce nothing. Right? Facebook doesn't produce any media or news. Google pro doesn't produce any content, like in a sense of they crawl it, but they don't produce. Airbnb has no hotels, Uber has no cars, you know, you know this stuff, right? You know, you, you know this stuff, right? So all these companies, at some point, they were just disintermediating by owning the interface to the customer, right? And with APIs, it's just this at scale. It's just this at scale with Stripe and Twilio. Now you use the developers to own the interface to the developers, and they will build applications that will make you the, uh, the leader of tomorrow, right? Also, in a programmable society, the word is flat. The word is completely flat, right? So I often take the example of the shipping container, right? You know, it makes the re this enable the globalization. This really made the word flat, right? You know, it's reduced the cost of transport by 96% compared to previous containers era where we had to put things bag, bag per bag on boats, right? Now we can put bags in a container, we take the container, we lift it, we put it on a train, on a boat, right? So 96%. Before the containers, producing a good like overseas were 30 to 40% extra uh, on, on the price, right? You know, so producing in China or producing a, anywhere else would cost 30 to 40 percent extra, right? So an iPhone produced in China would cost 400 dollars, uh, for uh, 400 dollars more than producing in France or in the U.S., right? Now it's the complete opposite because of the container, right? Now you can produce anywhere, right? The cost is you will so you will be able to, you are able to produce where it's is the cheapest, right? So this happens with APIs, right? With REST and JSON and new formats, right? Yeah, uh, a new format that, uh, uh, that enables that to happen, right? So uh, yeah, just, just to say. 
And also the marketing, marketing mix is being did like distributed at scale. So you know the marketing mix, pr price, product, promotion, and place. With APIs, because now you can integrate anywhere, people can integrate you in self-service, so the place is just like completely distributed. So it's the same marketing as before, but now the place can be not where you want, but it will be where the customer wants to see you, right? So that also enables the, the large scale, right? Go a little bit faster because of the, the time. I also claim that where, where there is data, there is a platform. Do you know this vacuum cleaner? You know, the Roomba, self-autonomous vacuum cleaner? Actually, so they, you buy it like 400, 500 euros, right, to clean your home. And actually, they collect data. And now they sell the data to a company like IKEA and others because how your flat is, right? So now they can have the plan, they, can, they know where you have furnitures, right? So when there is data, there is a platform tomorrow, right? As long as you have APIs to distribute it. Right? I also claim that the API economy is the extreme division of labor, but at scale. So this is how uh, the market works. You have uh, external costs, so company you, uh, like, uh, uh, company you, things that you outsource or things you insource, right? This is how it works. And for that, you will have API providers and API consumers. So you produce things, deliver it through APIs, consuming by others. But you may consume, you as a provider may consume other people's APIs, right? So that's uh, the value chain here. And so that's a little bit the, like the high division of labor in manufacturing, but completely at scale. Now we have dozens of thousands of APIs with millions of potential inter inside companies. So it will be exactly like the car industry, right? You know, you have 30,000 pieces in a car. So how many applications will have, how many APIs you will have in tomorrow's application, right? So that's really what, what we see. And, and so I claim, uh, and, and I claim to finish before the questions, and I will cut here, that at some point, the big idea, the big idea behind that is that organization will provide core competencies directly through APIs, right? Directly. And they will consume core competencies of others directly through APIs, right? And just to give you a number, on the, I will go back here, and that will be done here. But uh, on, the, on the car manufacturing industry, 40% of the value chain is made at the design and conception, right? 20% is the manufacturing and transport and logistics, and 40% at the distribution and sales. So that means that 80% of the value is just designing, and conceiving the application, thinking, and distributing and selling. So only 20% of the manufacturing. So this is what will enable the programmable economy is that with more and more APIs, more and more, more, and more let's say, uh, small pieces of software you can integrate, it will be a good opportunity to accumulate value and accumulate it a lot compared to just like, uh, you know, where people were thinking the value was in building the application. And if software is eating the world, the APIs are eating software. So you need to understand how do you integrate APIs, how you mix them with your internal system, and how you deliver them. Yeah. So that will be done for me. And yeah, we have, if you have time for one or two questions, yeah. Right. Anyone? Yeah, thank you, much. Thanks, Mehdi. Thank you. Any questions for Mehdi? Uh, so I'm, I'm curious, you showed several examples of, uh, of companies that have, are not producers but are, uh, are enabling through APIs. For, for those of us here in this room who have existing businesses, what's the, what's the way to be able to capitalize on that uh, without, uh, without starting a b brand new business unit? Right. So the thing is, I take the example, because of time, I, I couldn't go to, uh, to the end, my fault, but on, uh, I, I take the example of John Deere here, for example, so they used to sell tractors, you know, like, okay, we know them, but at some point, tractors, you know, you may, you may be disintermediated, you're just like iron with bolts, right, you know, if, you know. So what they did, I loved, so they have a developer program, right, but they completely changed their business model to add software to their hardware, right, to not be disintermediated, disintermediated because someone else will do it, right? So you can see here, but they, 
they, they make their product smarter with dashboards and with APIs and with mobile application and with data, external data. They completely change. They, they, they own the distribution and they own the software for the hardware, right? You know, when Steve Jobs said, I do, uh, uh, we, we are doing good software, but to do good software, we need good hardware. Right? So this is why they control the value chain. So I say my goal, my take is for hardware companies to own the software. If you don't own the software, the software will disrupt you like Microsoft disrupted IBM, right? So yeah, and another example is Airbus, I often take here. They try to do, again, they sell planes. You have 250,000 sensors in an A350, right? So that's a lot of sensors. But when they sell the plane, done. They don't know what's happened after next, right? So they're building the data platform to help airline companies to understand better how to use the hardware, right, to, to keep it, right? So this is my take for producers. If you don't own the software, right, you will be disintermediated by, by someone else, right? Even if you do planes or if you do uh, smart stuff, yeah. That's great. I especially like how you had slides to answer my question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mehdi. Yeah, thank you very much, Adam. Thank you.